Testing, 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 testing. One, two, three, one, two, three, testing, testing. That's a, that's a wide range mic, so you don't have to get real close. Okay, okay, that's good. I'm gonna see how this keyboard feels. Well, that's all right. I was just gonna see how it felt. It, it'll be all right. Uh, okay. Yep. You can turn it on. Well, I don't know where it goes on. Never liked the monkey with stuff for right away. Okay, right. If you have any questions about it, you got to ask that. It's Thank cool. You, uh, you don't have any. Uh, you don't have any water bottles. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Let's see, this goes over here.
Good morning. Good to see you here today. And uh, we're kind of running around a little bit. We had a little internet problem. My wife, uh, with her internet cape, flew in and helped us out there. <laughs> yes, that's right. And um, then we realized we didn't have hymnals up here. Everything kind of got moved back. And I hope you like the carpeting. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah. And they worked, they worked, they worked hard, yeah. And they worked hard, and I want to thank those who helped. Uh, we still have things to go back to where they need to be, and uh, including books and things like that back there, and uh, quite a few things. But some of it we have to wait a little bit till they get this done up here, but we're really appreciative. Um, as we begin, uh, you probably see, we, are, we have some guest musicians, Bob and uh, Karen Fast, and uh, they are going to do the worship time and I think the closing song too, if I'm right there. And so I think they'll do several uh, during the worship time and then another one at the close and they're uh, longtime friends of uh, Millie Harbaugh. So, and uh, helped you out during some times, didn't, didn't they Millie? Yes. So uh, we're glad to have you. Let's give them a hand, okay? <laughs> They, they, had some, they had some technical difficulties this morning, too. I don't know what they are, but that's what I was told. So. <laughs> but uh, great, uh, great to have you here. And as we, uh, and other visitors, thank you for being here. We want to uh, touch on the announcements. Of course, following uh, this morning's service, we have our uh, Sunday school. Young ones go back there. We'll, adults back up here in this big room. And uh, Paul Nichol is leading that. Also, uh, 11.30, our first light broadcast. You can listen, uh, 12.60 a.m., uh, kduz.com. You can listen to that anywhere in the world if you have Wi-Fi. And Wednesday, our uh, Bible study and prayer time. Hope that you will uh, take time to come to that. Friday, is that right, uh, women's Bible study? Is that? No, it's not. Is it? We just had it. Just had it. So it'll be the week after the next Friday. They go every other week. Uh, we will continue our men's Bible study on Saturday at 7 a.m., 7 to 9. Any other announcements that need to be made? Um, I should say on the board, Sean made up a uh, sign-up sheet for our center shot archery leaders who have gone through that uh, program. And we have students lined up that will be starting in September. And so uh, I encourage the teachers to go ahead and sign up. We need those for, um, we'll have enough that we'll have a group going on, shooting and a group uh, in the Bible study and then they switch off. So uh, go ahead and sign up so we can kind of get that lined up. Any, any other announcements? Brenda. Yeah, they, they, in this section here, uh, there was quite a bit of heaving, so it had to be ground down. So there, were, there was a lot of dust, and uh, you might have got some in your mailbox if you, and uh, I thought of bringing in my leaf blower, but uh, I don't know if that would work real good. So uh, anything else? Okay. Let's go ahead and begin uh, with a word of prayer. Let's join together. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you that your eyes are upon us, that your ears are open unto our prayers, that there is no problem too big for you. Sometimes they are way too big for us, but they are never too big for you. Lord, our mountains, when we even when we get in a plane and we look down on them, they don't seem so big. But, Lord, you look at things so differently than we do. And I pray for that one right now that maybe is anxious and carrying a weight that they might, even as Peter said, cast all of their cares upon you, whether they are watching or they are here, that you would speak to each one, you would encourage each one. Father, we pray for our nation that you might be leading and guiding and directing. We pray that righteousness would 
uh, begin to shine forth from our nation in a, in a, in a wonderful way. And so, Father, we ask for that. We ask for your help. We know that we, have, as a nation, have gone far away from you. We're like the, the Israelites as they went off into all kinds of wickedness, and yet you were gracious and brought them back. And so we pray that you would turn our nation around. We pray for those that are struggling. I know we've been praying for uh, little Nora that uh, is getting chemo treatments, and uh, we pray that you would be at work in her heart and life and their family. You would give them peace and others that are carrying great burdens, Lord, uh, that uh, we cover on Wednesday night that sometimes they can't be spoken out loud to other people, to the general public, but you, we can speak to you and we can speak to those that we trust. And so, Father, we pray for this service today. Thank you for our guests here. Thank you for Bob and Karen as they minister in song. And I pray that you would uh, just be guiding through every aspect of this service. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad to have uh, helping up front this morning our uh, head elder, Dave Behrens. And uh, I'm going to turn this part of the service over to him. Okay, well, good morning to all of you. It's great to see everybody. Um, we're going to start with hymn number 87. I just have to make a comment, though, because I am extra thrilled this morning with all of our improvements. But have you noticed the extra lighting? Anybody? Yes. We've been enlightened physically. <laughs> so I'm up here reading with no problems. And uh, so I've, I've wanted this for like 10 years, personally, anyway. So Matt, make sure you convey that to your friend, Matt. <laughs> the electrician who did this. And I'm going to call him personally and let him know what a great job. But everything else, everything you see here is just, I think, personally for me, I just, I think I represent a lot of people. I'm really thrilled with the improvements. So praise God, right? Praise our Lord for being so good to us. <clears throat> so if you're able, let's rise and turn in your hymnal to number 87, 87, Ferris Lord Jesus. <clears throat>
And if you remain standing here for our responsive reading as found in the bulletin there, based on Psalm 46, 1 through 3 and 8 through 11. <clears throat> God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, Almighty is, is with us. us. The, the God, God of Jacob, Jacob is, is our fortress. Okay, maybe see it. We'll receive tithes and offerings. Let's rise for the doxology here. Mm -hmm. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Father, we do praise you for all of these marvelous blessings, physical and spiritual. And we ask you to bless our offerings here as presented to you. We ask you to touch them, Lord, and multiply them as you did with the fishes and the loaves. And as you can do with our, our lives, as humble as they may be, you can use us mightily for your purposes. And we pray that would be so for each of us. And we pray these things in Jesus' life-giving name. Amen. And I'll just take a moment, just greet those around you. Don't kiss me. Good morning. Lord bless you. You can go ahead and take your seats. And uh, great to have the fasts with us, Bob and Karen. This is the first time I've met them, but Millie, uh, they ministered to her. Uh, when Was that after the horse accident or was it something else? Okay. Um, uh, but you've known them for a long time, the fast. 
Okay, very good. Well, let's give them a hand again as they come and share with us. Well, good morning. Good morning. Is, is this on? I, no, I got, it isn't. <laughs> I guess I got a strong voice. I maybe wouldn't need it. Testing, there we go. Well, I got to clarify a couple of things. Uh, well, and I got to say something about Millie here, but. Uh, I hope it's good. Oh, it always. <laughs> First of all, I've seen guest musicians. I'm going to tell you something. It's, uh, you know, they always say self-deprecating humor is good. You know what I mean by tell stuff on yourself? When uh, in my high school years, if you wanted to sing in the choir, any of you know what that was about? Choir? You had a choir in high school? Okay. Karen, I know she sang in her high school. You had to try out for it. Yes. Well, my uh, brother that was older than me, he, you know, he was, he was in the choir, so I'm a year behind him, and I just thought it would be a shoe-in for me. So I met this Delf Bazoyer was his name, and uh, you know, you had, I guess you had to sing something, to, you know, prove you could sing. And uh, he says, I'll let you know. And I wasn't accepted. And you know, at, at first I was kinda, I was, you know, it, that thing of rejection, you know. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> so uh, my sister, which was two years younger than me, she was in the choir. My brother that was, well, he's five years younger than I am. He was in the choir. I'm going to move on here real fast when you say guest musicians. So uh, that's the way that went. Well... As far as guest musicians, I guess it started when I married Karen. We, uh, there was an elderly person in the church that took an interest in us, young couple. And uh, we would go to nursing homes with us. That's where we would bring our kids. Older people just love kids in nursing homes. And uh, we'd just sing, and I monkeyed around with the accordion a little bit and the piano a little bit. And so, we, you know, I just started singing. That's all I knew, just, you know, as far as singing. With Karen, she always sings alto. And we always kept that up until when we got into Colorado, we kind of really got into ministry. We had our own nursing home ministry, and we went to rescue missions with another couple. And so that's really where it's at. I just sing. Okay? Okay. All right. So, so we're going to leave that at that. Now I got to say about Millie how we met Millie. And this is going to be a little humorous, but not long. We had just gotten to Northfield. We've been in Northfield six years this fall. And we weren't even unpacked. And the weather is bad, and there's this knock on the door. No, the doorbell rang. And here's this real estate lady. I didn't know her from any of you. And she says, I'm here. I would, there's someone that would like to buy your house. She knows your house and she's willing to pay X amount of dollars more. Well, I said, step inside. Uh, so we just, no, I said, you know, uh, no, we're not. So uh, we weren't going to the same church she was at the time, but later on we started going there. And they're serving coffee in the uh, coffee room, somewhat like you have here. And I hear this voice. And I says, that's, that's the same gal that was at our house trying to sell our house from underneath us. <laughs> and that, that's the way we got to know Millie. And since, uh, and then I'm going to close with this. Karen and I have been dairy farmers for 20 years. But the more I got to know Millie, we got to know Millie. There's nothing I could talk about the dairy business as far as that she didn't know. She knew more about it than I knew about it. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to get to know her, and that's really how we ended up here today. We talked about maybe coming down having something to eat, and we talked about coming to the church. So, All right, that's all I have to say. Karen, you want to say something? We're here to sing a little bit. I'm, I'm just going to give a brief testimony this morning <clears throat> about my, uh, my pathway to heaven. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I, I can't even remember even going to church. 
But anyway, when I was 16, I had a Christian friend in school, and she had invited me to some evan evangelistic meetings. And I went, and it's the first time I heard the, heard the gospel. But they, the evangelists, had everyone raise their hands if they knew without a shadow of doubt that they were going to heaven. And I couldn't. I had never heard it before that you could know you're going to heaven. And so that let me, led me on a, a search for God. And the following, that was in the wintertime, and then in the following summer, God allowed me to go to a, a special, uh, what do they call it? Special, a conference in Medicine Lake. Minnesota. It was a special, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, they, uh, they uh, shared that you needed to ask Jesus into your heart, confess your sins, and get saved. And that's where I, I went to, uh, they had an altar call. And praise the Lord, I went forward and asked Jesus into my heart. And my whole world changed, and I thank him for it. Amen. So... We're going to sing some songs about heaven today. You know, it's just, uh, it's just such a pleasure to see that you're still using old hymns here. I, I can't remember the last time I've been in a church where they used hymns. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So. All right. Well, how many of you know we want you to sing along? If you don't want to, that's fine, too. I can tell you're uh, not an uptight group. You're a very homey group, and that's great. This is what is, I don't, I'm not going to get into politics, but this is what has made America great, people coming together on Sunday in church. Yeah. And that's, what's, that's what is uh, lacking throughout the length and breadth of our country. And then where people are gathering, sad to say, they're, they're not really preaching the gospel. But So I know many of you know this song by heart. You only have to look it up. Amazing Grace, yeah. sing it with us. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to sing this little song I learned in Bible school. Uh, in those days, we went to Bible school, vacation Bible school, for two weeks. And we'd sing courses like this. Well, thank you, Lord, sing it. for saving my soul. Well, thank you, Lord, for So rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Well, thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me. Salvation so rich and free. And then another one that uh, I think it's just universal all over. Amazing Grace and how, amaz how amazing it is. Written by John Newton. He was, uh, many of you I'm sure know the history of the song. He was a drunk, but he found the Lord. And that's what makes all the difference. Well, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now was blind but now I see was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believe. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright 
shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Just think of it. When we've been there, that's what we just sang, 10,000 years, we've no less days to sing his praise than when we first begun. That's eternity. Praise God. Amazing grace. All right, another one. Uh, if you want to find it in your hymnal, we'll take time for you to find it. Since Jesus come in, it came into my heart. You know that? Yeah. All right, yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I love the old hymns. There are a lot of good uh, contemporary songs, but. All right. Okay, ready? What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have seen, I have ceased from my wandering and going astray. Since Jesus came into my heart and my sins which are many are all washed away since jesus came into my heart since jesus came into my heart since jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since jesus came into my heart we'll do the fourth verse i shall go there to dwell in that city i know since jesus came into my heart and I'm happy, so happy as onward I go, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. Let's see. Okay, and then if some of you want to look up, here's a song. Karen wanted some songs about heaven. When we all get to heaven. Sound familiar? Yep. All right. <laughs> Someone is uh, right on top of it. When we all get to heaven. 772. 772. I, uh, I know there's chapter and verse for it. Uh, I'm... I think it was Apostle Paul said that in this life, if we only have hope for this life, we are of most men miserable. And there's a lot of truth to that. But beyond this life, we have life. And that's what we're singing about. You know, when we've been there 10,000, we're singing about heaven. So uh, let's sing about it. Praise the Lord. Well, 
shall sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I gotta flip over my page. I'm not very good at that. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I guess you want to stop with that, right, Karen? All right. Uh, Okay, here's one that's not really in a, kind of a traditional song so much. You're all familiar with the Gaithers in this church, I'm sure. Amen. Yeah, all right. So it's, uh, he touched me. He touched me. I lost my place here. Oh, you have in your hymnal. find it well there's only two shackled by a heavy burden beneath the load of guilt and shame Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. He touched me, oh yes, he touched me, and all oh, the joy that was my soul, something me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never see him. Oh, I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that was my soul, something happened. 
I mean, you want one, you want to do one more song? No. <laughs> otherwise, we'll otherwise we'll just stop. Well, we'll yeah, we'll have it pulled down, okay? We'll see how we are. Then. Okay. Let's give them a hand. All right. I think we're going to have to have you back, and we'll just have a regular old hymn sing. How about that? Yeah. If you have your Bibles, if you turn to Luke 17 in the children's uh, church, uh, they're welcome to go now. Well, you, got one, you got one going, at least. You got one going, I think. All right, uh, Luke 17... We spent some time as a group on Wednesday night. I usually don't do that, but there's so much in this passage that I kept coming back to it. In Luke 17, we're told about the healing of a leper. And uh, we're told in Luke 4:27, Jesus pointed out that uh, there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. They we're told that there were a lot of people with leprosy. Now, there is still leprosy. There are different types of skin diseases. And even in the United States, there are some with leprosy. But it's, a, for the most part, a different kind of skin disease called Hansen's disease. And I don't know all the details, but other parts of the world, and it's been able to be treated. Um, I've shared that in my previous pastorate, there was a missionary that came, and she told, she worked with a surgeon and uh, on people that had leprosy because their hands curl up and, and they become almost useless. So what he would do, he'd do a surgery. But they have no feeling, and so they would, if they, you know, a lot of it is they burn themselves or they get an infection and they have no way of knowing what has happened, but it affects their, their body. And uh, what they would do, what the surgeon did, is he would uh, do a surgery so then they could use their hands, but there were so many rats in that area that when their hand hung over the side, they would gnaw off fingers. So what he started to do was send each patient home with a little kitty cat and the problem was solved you know God can even use cats isn't that something I know he uses dogs but he can even use cats and um, and that they would sometimes go to open a jar and they wouldn't know how hard they were twisting and the skin would come off you know that they would get infection and things like that well this was something that was extremely serious in fact in the Old Testament law, someone with leprosy, uh, they had to be separated. They couldn't live life as normal. Even King Uzziah was stricken with leprosy and he, he couldn't live in the palace. He had to live in a little separate place. And they would cry out, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine that type of isolation being shut off? No matter where you went, uh, you couldn't go just anywhere. Well, here we're told about Jesus in verse 11 of Luke 17. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. You know, problems sometimes bring people together. And that was the case here. It was leprosy that evidently brought these men together. Who knows what their way of life was, what their occupations had been, but now their classification is that they are lepers. They have this horrible skin disease. A leper would need to isolate them themselves uh, from family and friends. And can you imagine just how lonely that would be? And to uh, feel as though you can 
your life is over as it was. Terrible. But God sometimes uses problems to help us realize our great need and to draw us to Jesus. God uses problems. We see the problem that was experienced. And then we see the pity requested. Look at verse 13. So here are these 10 lepers. They're standing at a distance, and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. That was a corporate prayer, all of them. They wanted God's pity and God's mercy. And problems, even severe problems, are often things that God uses to turn hurting humans to himself. They were crying out to him because of their position. It's important for us to remember to take our problems to Jesus. I don't know what your problem is today. Everybody has problems, don't they? Everybody. It can be physical. It can be financial. It can be relational. It can be psychological, emotional, whatever it may be. Maybe loaded with cares or whatever. But they cried out to Jesus. They evidently had heard about him, and they evidently believed he could do something. So that's why they cried out. He, he tried everything else. It's important for us to remember to take our problems to Jesus. And we see that sometimes corporate prayer stems from corporate problems. These 10 men with leprosy all needed Jesus to have pity on them. And they cried out, have pity on us, mercy on us. The Lord was able to do for these individuals, we'll see, what no man could do. The request was directed at Jesus and the request revealed their desperation. They were pitiful. They were in need of his help. Have you ever been, I've shared this before, but it sticks in my mind, and you can Google and look it up. Um, a number of years ago, there was a young man in, I believe it was Utah. He was, uh, you know, basically just uh, going around, uh, traveling and, uh, you know, hiking, and he ended up, a boulder rolled on his arm, and he was pinned. And after a number of days, finally, and they were searching for him with planes, but they couldn't see him because he was underneath and uh, some type of a cavern, and he ended up, he had to cut off his own arm. And when Tom Brokaw went with him back to that place where this had happened, the young man just started weeping. And you can Google it and look it up. And Tom Brokaw said, what, what are you feeling? What are you thinking now? Something like that. And he said, I just remember how pitiful I was. How pitiful. Have you ever felt pitiful? I have. Some areas I still do feel pitiful. I need God's mercy. And the Greek term that's used there is translated mercy, or it can be pitiful, but the idea of desperate need. What's the difference between grace and mercy? Some people have, have defined uh, grace as receiving something we do not deserve, and mercy is not receiving what we do deserve. However, in this passage, we see that pity or mercy is a request made by these individuals in need of something, namely a miraculous healing. Maybe you need something like that. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus told a, a story about a rich man and a beggar. You know that, rich man and Lazarus. And the beggar was laid at the rich man's gate, and he was licked by dogs, which were scavengers, the sores on his arms. And uh, he just wanted what fell from the rich man's table, and ultimately they both died. And the rich man, who was clothed in fine linen and he uh, had all kinds of food and delicacies. He died and ended up in a place of torment. And the man who had been laid at the rich man's table, he was ushered into a place of bliss. And that same Greek term is used here in Hades, Luke 16, 23, 24, in Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. That's the same Greek term that's used for the lepers. Have pity on me, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. In Luke 18, again, the same term is used a couple of times. We're told that uh, 
as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, have pity on me. Same Greek term. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? This is a blind man. And he said that I want to see. And Jesus healed him. But it began by crying out to Jesus. In Matthew 5, 7, Jesus himself said, Blessed are the merciful. Same Greek term. Blessed are the merciful. The, those that... that uh, Show mercy, for they will be shown mercy. In Matthew 18, Jesus was asked by Peter how often he should forgive. Jesus told the story about the king and, and a man who owed the king all kinds of uh, a lot, millions, but, the, but it, he was forgiven. But then he went out, and here was a guy that owed him a little bit, and he grabbed him by the throat, and he said, pay up. Then the master called the servant, you wicked servant. He said, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy, same Greek term, on your fellow servant as I had on you? And uh, some people have the gift of mercy. Maybe that's one of your gifts. In Romans 12, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each one of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. It, if, if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Do you have that gift? Then use it and be happy about it. It's a wonderful gift, especially when you're in need of mercy. There's been times when we have all been in need of mercy. Though I have not been stopped by a law enforcement office for quite a while, not that I shouldn't, don't deserve that at different times. But I remember probably, well, gosh, this is 15, 20 years ago, and I was... On my way, I got drawn for the moose hunt, and I'm by myself, and I got a canoe hanging out of the back, and I'm trying to get there because I get up to Ely to get in and then get back to where I want to get. And so I was behind this lady who was feeding her kids breakfast, evidently, because she was all over the road. She was going and reaching back and giving them stuff, and I couldn't get around her. The road was like this. Finally, she turned off, so I took off. And just like that, I met a, a sheriff. And he hit the lights, and I pulled over. He said, do you know why I stopped you? I said, yes, I do, but I hope you'll show mercy. <laughs> and he kind of went like this. And he said, where, where are you going? I said, uh, well, I have got drawn for the moose. Oh, he did. He said, I've shot a, I've shot a couple when they get hit by a car, then, and then, then I have this friend. We butchered him. And, uh, uh, how are you how are you hunting? I said, well, I have a long bow. So he got out. Next thing, he's out there looking at my bow, and we became friends. And he wrote me out a warning. He said, "This is for," uh, he said, "This you know, it's not going to cost you anything, but this is showing my boss that I'm at work, and you need to watch it." I said, "Well, thank you, thank you." He showed me mercy, but I will tell you, when I came out of the Boundary Waters without a moose, I drove the speed limit because that officer had shown me mercy, and I, I just was so grateful. It wasn't that I was going 100 miles an hour. You know, I was probably going 10 over. But he showed me mercy. If you have the gift of mercy, it's a wonderful gift. Paul testified that he had received God's mercy. In 1 Timothy 1, 12 to 14, he says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to this service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor, that's what Paul had been, and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our God, of our Lord, was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. 
Peter told his readers in 1 Peter 2.10, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, same Greek term, but now you have received mercy. Our salvation is receiving the mercy of God. What we do not deserve, he shows us mercy. Peter told his readers, as I said, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Uh, these men realized their need. They stood afar off. They recognized that they were sick. These men requested an answer to their need. And these men recognized Jesus as the answer to their need. He is the answer, and we cry out to him. You know, growing up, one of the things that when I finally did start seeking the Lord was that my mom was faithful in reading the Bible every night. And when I was so empty and searching, I knew that the Bible had the answer. It still does. And I knew when I started on that search that somehow I didn't understand it. Remember, I had a New Testament, a Phillips Modern English New Testament that my parents had given me for confirmation. And where's this thing begin? Where's the, you know, day one or whatever. But as I searched, I fell in love with Jesus Christ. And I did fall in love with him. I don't know how he can love me, but I fell in love with him. And part of it because I saw how he responded to, to religion and we're talking about a relationship, and I could identify with him. The problem experienced, the pity, mercy that was requested, and then the prescription that was granted. Remember, we're in the Gospel of Luke. What was Luke as he began his journey with Jesus? What was he? A doctor. Now, Luke might have given some prescriptions, but I doubt if he ever gave a prescription like this. We see the prescription that was granted by Jesus.